If you haven't tried Marie Callender's pot pies, these are fucking amazing. I literally, like, my diet is like 90% of those. I am literally absolutely not kidding. What do you need for a home recording studio? In this video, I'm gonna tell you the nine essentials, no matter what your budget is, probably no matter what your living situation, no matter what you're doing. What more could you ask for? Coming right up. Number one is computer. You need a computer. I mean, a computer is kind of like the mother of all this shit. I have a MacBook Pro. I also recommend getting an external hard drive. I have a red Seagate. I forget what the name of the model is, but it holds one terabyte of information or two. I'll link to all this stuff, the whole kit of this equipment, as well as my software, which is probably a topic for another video, can be found in the description at kit.com slash the underscore toucan underscore Sam. That's my kit handle, my Twitter handle, and my Instagram handle. If any of you guys want to connect and follow me on there. Number two is DAW and interface. So there's hardware and software. Hardware is physical. It's actual objects. Software is just, you know, it's programs that do shit like this. It's digital. A DAW or a DAW or a DAW, I don't know what the fuck it's called, is software. Probably the only software on this list. It's the program you record your vocals to, you record and mix, and you can make beats and all that other good stuff. My DAW is Logic Pro X. If you're looking this equipment up as I go, by the way, and you're like, bro, I'm not spending my fucking money on that. I can't afford that shit. There's a place I talk about toward the end of the video. You can go there and get something no matter what your budget is. You can get more more of these things and before you know it it'll be recording in no time it's what connects the computer to pretty much everything else when you use the interface and you record your vocals your vocals get transferred to the to the DAW on the computer through the interface does that make sense an interface is also called an audio processor my interface is a really high quality one called the Apollo twin duo behind my computer both physically and monetarily in my studio it was the most expensive thing in my studio it was more expensive than both of the speakers combined speaking of speakers number three is monitors when people say monitors for a while, I was like, bro, what the fuck is a monitor? You mean like monitor lizard? Aren't those like those giant lizards that ooze fucking like red slime out of their mouth? Why would you need two of those for your studio? And where the fuck would you buy one from? Amazon or the Amazon? <laughs> monitors is another word for speakers. I only use the term if I'm talking about giant speakers that are used in a recording studio. If they're not my monitors, they're probably just speakers, to me at least. The monitors I have are Yamaha HS8s. A is for inches, and that's the measurement of my dick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's the measurement of the subwoofers and the monitors. I had to look into this, by the way, but just so you don't have to, a great way to get better use out of your monitors is the direction they're facing when you use them, especially for mixing. Some people just use them and have them facing the other side of the room on like a 90 degree angle from the wall. It's apparently better, like I have them here, to have them facing a little bit on an angle, but facing your head, both a little inward, because that way your ears get the most of the frequencies. They're facing your head or something like that. I'm not too familiar with the technical stuff behind this. Number four is microphone. If you're producing, just making beats, you're probably eventually gonna need one of these, especially if you have friends or something come over and record at some point. Maybe you wanna have your own personal studio for it. Or maybe you wanna start recording yourself and start rapping and singing like me. You know, add another skill or two to your palette. If you're recording yourself, you're gonna eventually want one of these. Or if you're an artist, you're probably gonna need a microphone to record. I mean, I don't know what else you would use. Like some songs, if you don't use them, some songs I've heard, and they sound like they were recorded using a fucking potato. I haven't tried a potato, I'd rather not. Even with my software. My microphone is called the Bluebird. Again, I'm gonna talk later in the video about a place where you can find all this and other brands or types of these equipment that better suit your needs, your budget, what you're looking for, and maybe your living situation, no matter how knowledgeable you are about this stuff. Number five is headphones. Ideally, there are two types of headphones in a studio, open back and closed back. Open back should be used for mixing and closed back should be used for recording. I use Biodynamic DT990s, which should just be used for mixing. I had really dumb reasoning behind getting them. Biodynamics is a German company and dude, Germans are really fucking good with audio engineering. So Biodynamics, also has DT770s, which are closed back headphones. They're for recording. I looked for those and saw DT990 somewhere and they just kind of stood out. I thought they looked cooler. And I was like, maybe they're better headphones, right? Because they look cooler and 990 is a higher number than 770. This is really dumb. 990 is the ones I got. They're open back headphones. They're better for mixing. They're the ones I have, but the cost of getting those for mixing and recording isn't that big as far as I know. I mean, the only thing is regardless, they're fucking great for mixing. One and two, it's really just that when I'm recording, originally I noticed it's best to have any background noise as low or minimal as possible. Sometimes artists send me their vocals to mix. This is really important, by the way. There's something called bleeding, where if you cut yourself, you'll see this red stuff. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, that is bleeding, but this is a different kind of bleeding. 
if you record yourself, you want as little bleeding as possible. I'll put it that way. Bleeding is where you can hear the beat or anything else really in the background. If you have the beat playing, you're rapping or singing to it, you can hear it in the raw vocal tracks, like the recordings. And it can mess with so many things when they're being mixed. So reducing background noise is one way to prevent bleeding. Another is obviously to get closed back headphones so that they don't bleed through the headphones. But a great way I found, like a genius, because I got open back ones like an idiot, <laughs> is to turn the beat down so the mic can't pick it up. I record with the beat volume as low as I can. And obviously I turn it back up when I'm done. Number six is cables. This sounds a lot more painful than it is. I only really have like two cables or three. The cables connecting the monitors to the interface. The ones I got just came with the monitors. But the two cables I got, one of them is the Thunderbolt cable. It connects the computer to the interface. Again, the interface is what connects everything all together. It's like a powerhouse. The computer is more like the director or the conductor. Well, I guess you are in a way, but you're not buying yourself. You're already in the studio. I got a Thunderbolt cable. I also got what's called an XLR cable. I don't know what that stands for, but I know what it's used for. It's used to connect the microphone to the interface. So you have the interface connected to the monitors, you have it connected to the computer, you have it connected to the microphone. That's all you need, on top of a couple other things. So the interface really just connects to three things in my studio, at least the computer, the monitors, and the microphone. The monitors' cables came with them, Thunderbolt cable for a computer, and XLR cable for the microphone. It's really not that difficult. When I saw cables on the list, I was like, <laughs> my heart like pumped out of my chest and fell onto the floor and it kind of hurt. I had to get it back up before I bled to death out of my ears with the with the beat playing in the background. Number seven is stand. You shouldn't need to hold your microphone or anything. I have a Samson MK10. That's the microphone stand I have. Not much to say on this. I mean, it's a great mic stand. You can adjust it and everything, but it's not some crazy piece of technology. It's just a piece of metal that holds a piece of technology connected to another one. Nothing that special. It is important though. Number eight is pop filter. You ever use a mic before and notice how many times you spit and make B and P sounds and they come out way louder than all the other ones? That's what this is for. I mean, I don't know if it's meant to protect your microphone from your spit and even sweat, but for me, that it kind of helps with that. <laughs> I use what's a Nady or Natty MPF6. Number nine is desk. I have a Z-Line Claremont desk. Ideally, a desk can hold all of this shit. The desk was way cheaper than I thought it would be. I have all this equipment and haven't had to replace any of it in two years. That's how long I've had it so far. I remember when I had the money one night, I just started looking up like, damn, what if I move closer to my job? I now live within less than walking distance, but I was thinking maybe I could have my own personal recording studio. It's been two years, like I said, and I have probably made more money using it than I spent to get it in the first place. But when I was looking it up, I was like, what the fuck do I need? Like, I got a computer. I need, what else, a microphone? What connects the microphone to the computer? Does the microphone even connect to the computer? Or does it connect to something else that connects to something else that connects to the computer? This was quite confusing. So I had a budget of a few thousand dollars. I mean, my budget was maybe five or six. I had to move in, which was maybe two. I had seven total. And it took between two or three for the studio, and the rest I spent on like apartment shit, like the bed and the internet and the kitchen. But I found a site I'll link in the description. It's eHome Recording Studios. It perfectly fit my needs. It has the nine different things you need. It has links to all of them so you can save the most money. It talks about the essentials. It also has recommendations for each one of them, like what brand is better for what. And it doesn't overwhelm you or anything with options. It talks about all of this in very layman's terms so you can understand it even if you don't really know that much about this stuff. And even if you do, even if you have a lot of experience and you had no money, but say your friends gave you 50K to spend on this studio, because he believes so strongly in your skill and drive in the universe and it's like, okay, Kevin, you got this. Even in that case, it has four different kinds of studios for different budgets, different expectations. Maybe you're starting out, maybe you're a pro. And shit, maybe you're on some Dr. Dre status type shit. But those four different types of studio will require upgrading, of course, to your judgment, from one to the other and so on. Eventually, you won't even need the site. But like I said, ideally, it probably fits your budget. It fits what you're doing and it fits your living situation. Like I said in the beginning of the video, what more could you ask for? And if it doesn't, you could be resourceful with those things in some other way. Believe me, I believed in myself, I still do, and I definitely have enough left in me to believe in you as well. Who here has a recording studio? What are some things in it? Are they the same as mine? Are we fucking twins? Because same! <laughs> you guys have anything else you want me to talk about in future videos? Let me know in the comments and I'll give you a shout out if and when I use it. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up. There are links at the bottom of the description to all my social media. Also at the bottom of the description, there's a link to my new production kits where you can find all the equipment and software that I use to make music. And these videos. If you buy any, I get commissioned which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos for you guys. I made all the beats in this video. If you ever want to use them, you can find them at samuel.world. Make sure to leave a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already. If you could turn on that little bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.